Hello Bobcats. In this video we will be discussing um, the nomenclature of binary covalent compounds um, also known as binary molecular compounds. So covalent and molecular um, can be interchanged and they mean the same thing. Now remember with ionic compounds when you have a formula in front of you the first thing you need to do is make a decision on if it's ionic and the way you do that is you look and see if it has a metal. If it has a metal first and a non-metal it is going to be an ionic compound. So what kind of decision do you need uh, to make with covalent compounds? So let's look at that. So covalent compounds. Now covalent compounds do not have charges. They do not involve charges. There is a non-metal bonded to a non-metal. So it's non-metal to non-metal. So that's the first thing you look for. And if it's non-metal to non-metal, you know it's covalent or molecular. Now the thing is, there is no charges. It's not a positive and a negative charge. The electrons are actually sharing between the two atoms. So electrons are shared. And because they're shared, uh, there is no charges involved. No charges involved. Now why is it important that I state this, no charges involved? Because remember with the ionic compounds, um, it's the charges that indicate to us uh, or determine the number of atoms in the molecule. So with covalent compounds, how do we determine the number of atoms in the molecule? Well we use uh, prefixes. So use prefixes to identify the number of atoms in a molecule. Now this is different than ionic. Remember with ionic it's the charges that determine the number of uh, atoms. Here we have to use prefixes. Okay, so let's go through those prefixes real quick. Now these prefixes are Greek prefixes, they're not Latin. And um, so a Latin prefix would be like bi. In fact, here we're using a bi, binary meaning two. That's a Latin prefix. These are going to be Greek, so some of them are the same and some of them are different. If you have one atom, we would use the prefix mono. If you have two atoms, you use the prefix di. So it's not bi, but it's di. Three is the same where you use tri, like in tricycle, three wheels. Four is different. Um, we use tetra, not quad. It's tetra. Now, the easy way to remember tetra as four is I think everybody's played the game Tetris and if you remember in Tetris there's always four blocks that are falling down in different shapes that you have to fill in the spaces so it's four and that's why they call it Tetris and then five is Penta like in the Pentagon five sides then six is Hexa seven is Hepta eight is octa, nine is nana, and ten is deca. And there are only two basic rules that you have to follow um, in naming uh, covalent compounds or uh, covalent binary compounds. So let's go through those two rules uh, briefly. The first rule, rule number one, is that the first element Sorry, first element is just the name of the element with the prefix. Is just name with prefix to indicate the number of atoms. Now, um, so remember the prefixes are indicating the number of atoms. Um, however, there's a caveat to this one, and that is if the first element 
um, is a single atom do not use the prefix mono. Okay, so we do not use the prefix mono if the first element is a single atom. And we'll go over that and practice that. And then rule number two is that the second element ends in eyed. Of course, you have to use the prefix to tell you the number of atoms, but the name ends in "-ied". I-D-E. I'd. The I didn't show up very well. I-D-E. Okay, so let's go over a couple of these and practice this. So if I look at, um, let's just look at the uh, common ones that you guys have probably seen quite a bit of. CO and CO2. Now, since this is a single atom, we don't say monocarbon monoxide, we say carbon monoxide. So you write the name of the element for the first one, um, just the normal name, and because this is a single element, we do not use mono, and then, of course, that's a single oxygen, so we say mon, but instead of saying monoxide, you just say monoxide. You can drop one of the O's. But the prefix mono tells me it's one oxygen. In this case, still one carbon, so we'd say carbon, not monocarbon. You don't say monocarbon dioxide, you say carbon dioxide. And di for two, two oxygens, and then oxide. It ends in ide. Remember, they end in ide, the second one. So let's look at another. What if we have something like N2S3? Okay, so there's two, so that's di-nitrogen. Di-nitrogen. Again, we use the regular name and the prefix to tell you how many. And then tri-sulfide. Tri meaning three sulfurs and then sulfide, you end in I-D-E. Okay, so prefixes and the last one ends in I'd. I'm just going to do one that we see commonly uh, like PCL5. And this would be phosphorus, not monophosphorus, but just phosphorus. And then 5, that's penta chloride. Penta chloride. And so uh, that's uh, all there is to naming binary covalent compounds. Um, the other group of covalent compounds are molecular, I mean, I'm sorry, are organic compounds, and we'll go over the basics of that later. But right now, we're just looking at binary covalent. In other words, uh, two types of atoms that are nonmetal to nonmetal bonded each other. And we use prefixes to identify the number of atoms, like die for two, try for three. And that is the uh, video on binary covalent compounds. Thank you.